Check two one two. What's up, everybody? This is DJ Divine Justice. Um, today I'm gonna be going over my Tractor Scratch Pro Two sample deck mapping for the Akai APC twenty. Um, first thing you need to understand is that when you're going from a track deck to a sample deck, uh, three things happen. So I'll show that when I have this sample, this loop going, and I drag it down to a sample deck. stop that track, you'll see three things have happened. Um, it's loaded to the sample deck, it's pl started playing, and it's been muted. So that's why you can see on my APC20, it's playing, um, and it's broken up the sample, the loop in the, in the sample deck, into four parts. Um, and then this gives you a one, two, three, four, or depending on how big it is, it basically just breaks this up into four parts. Um, this is lighted yellow instead of green, showing that it's playing. Um, these are green because there's a sample in them playing, and these are empty because there is no sample in the sample slots. This is blank because it's muted, and this is lit because it's muted. This works as like a temporary mute. So if I go ahead and hit this button, it'll unmute it. Now my modifiers work as um, those three things, load, play, and mute. I'm sorry, down here, low, play, and mute. So if I undo play and do mute, and hit the, the action button for this sample deck, then you can see it goes back to being muted, where this is muted, temporary mute, or mute on and off. Um, my, all of my modifiers go as follows. Um, this modifier is load, then I have play, then I have mute, then I have re-trigger, then I have erase. Um, so just to show you, obviously, hit erase, hit the action button for that track, boom, it goes blank because I've erased it out. Um, this one is load from list, this one is copy from loop recorder, and this one is group mode. So what needs to happen is, in order to do what naturally happens when you drag it, I have to have these three lit up, those three modifiers going, and then play the track. Then I'm gonna select the action button for that track for that sample deck. And because it was already muted, the mute function goes back and toggles back and forth. Um, but you kind of get the idea of what needs to happen. You need to have three modifiers going. Um, take these off and uh, I'll stop that track. And to show you how the re-trigger works, it's pretty simple. That works as re-trigger. Um, now also this button works to change the play mode. So it'll flash when it's in, um, um, what, what do you call it, one shot mode. It'll stay solid if it's in um, loop mode. Go back to loop mode. Um, and it works the same thing also if it's stopped, and if it's in one shot, it'll flash. So if it's flashing in green, that means that it's stopped and in one shot, and if it's flashing in orange, that means it's playing in one shot. And right now, obviously, that's my play, and I'm just toggling between play on and off. Um, obviously, a race works pretty self-explanatory. Um, uh, erase, erase. Um, six works as load from list. So what I've done is I've made it so that this also hits the um, browse only function. So I can see just all of my um, tracks. And then instead of working as modifiers, these three buttons become up and down over there in the um, up and down and expand and collapse. So therefore I can go and I know that in um, Explorer, oops, F, uh, 
music production, samples, and tractor loops are where my loops are, and then this button will work to scroll down, and then I can um, start loading some loops straight to these empty sample decks. So I just hit that one, get a sample there, that one gets a sample there, that one gets a sample there, that one gets a sample there, and then when I'm done, just close it right back out. Um, this modifier works as group mode, so when I hit that button, these four take on different motions. They work as play, re-trigger, mute, and then these two will change the mode. So you'll see I can trigger all four. And you'll see they're all... This one's obviously sh a quarter shorter, so it's cycling through faster than these other ones are. And there's, so since I'm still in group mode, that's group play that I just did, group re-trigger, um, group mute, and then if I want to switch them and, and al alternate between two of them, um, I can temporarily change two, and then keep on doing the, the mute, and it switches them back and forth as far as which ones are playing and which ones are muted, and I can go back and then mute them all at once. Then I can have group, um, whether well, all in group loop or all in group one shot. And obviously they all ended because it was in um, one shot mode. Go back to loop mode and it stops flashing. Got re trigger, still in group mode. Group play. those tracks. Now with my faders I have um, volume and filter. So volume, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory. I can pull down all four volumes. Let me start one track. Got play going. Now if I want to use the filter, I go to filter and as you can see, all the filters are off. That's these buttons. So now filters on. It works in soft takeover mode, so it's going to wait till I get to the middle. And then it's going to start affecting it. Now the cool thing is that instead of me trying to get back to zero, once I'm done filtering down, I can just pop right back in. And now if I go back over to volume, it's going to wait until I get all the way up in soft takeover mode to then be able to control the volume. Now while I'm in this sample mode and all these eight rows are all the same, um, I can half and double with these two buttons the size of the sample deck. So you can see it's only going half the distance and half it again. And so now it's just staying because that's a quarter of it. And then this will be reset after I break it all the way down. And this will be phase sync, which will sync that just in case when you come out of a loop it's not synced up. You can hit this and it syncs back in. Usually does a pretty good job about bringing itself back in on, on, um, on sync. Um, now I also have buttons for the loop recorder. So over here on this side, then I have my record, play. Um, this selects the size, as you can see. Um, right above size, I have delete. It obviously it works if you have a, something in there. Um, and size only works if you don't. And um, undo and redo only works if you have more than uh, one layer. So, I'll launch a couple clips and show how that works. Okay, 
now I'm going to engage the record, and while it's recording, this light stays up. Stop for those. And so right now we're just hearing the, um, the loop recorder. So I'll change um, this, and then maybe go to re-trigger, and then I'll do this back. So you can see about the undo and redo. So now that's another layer. So I can undo that layer. And then you won't hear that pass part where I was doing the like this from that other sample. And then this also works as the dry wet volume. And this is the play button, just like all of these are kind of like the action button. This is the play button for the loop recorder, so that when I hit that, um, it stops. And then if I were to, if I were to delete it, um, then this would go blank to show me that there's no sample there. So um, I believe that just about covers it. Oh, the copy from Loop Recorder. Um, well, I just deleted it. If you have um, these going again. Get something there in the Loop Recorder. Then you can go to um, copy from Loop Recorder and copy it, say, into here where there's no sample. Stop that, unmute this, and you got copy from the recorder. So, um, hopefully uh, that gave you some good ideas. And uh, that has been my Akai APC20 MIDI mapping for Tractor Pro 2's sample decks. DJ Divine just signing off. Always a good day to learn something new. Peace.